movement that encourages you to live with less. Less stuff, less possessions, less clutter, and find more joy and more time to focus on what matters. So what is minimalish? It's the grace-filled way of doing the same thing. Sustainable, realistic minimalism that actually makes sense for your life. The Minimalish Podcast is here to help you make life lighter realistically. I'm your host, Desiree, and my passion is to help you create room for what matters to you by cutting the clutter and excess stuff in your home and your life. Minimalism has helped me not only simplify my life and my home, but it also continuously helps me become a better version of myself. It's not just about decluttering and having a tidy home, but about how having less stuff will give you more time and more space to focus on creating the life you actually want to live. We'll talk about topics of minimalism, motherhood, simple, intentional living, and everything in between here on the show each week. Let's walk towards simple together. Hi, friend. Welcome to the Minimalish Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. And real quick, before we dive into today's episode... If you're loving this podcast, go ahead and hit the pause button and then screenshot that you're listening in and then go ahead and share it on your Insta stories and tag me. I cannot tell you how much it makes my day when you do this. I love to see that you're loving the show and that you love it enough to share it with your people. Okay, so let's get to today's episode. I'm chatting with my friend Carleen Armstead, who is at The Minimal Mom on Instagram. I love our conversation because it truly felt like two friends chatting about something that really changed their life. And that is, for us, of course, minimalism. Carleen and I have a lot in common. We both have toddlers, and we both stay at home with these little loves. Carleen is a mom of two, and she started sharing her minimalism journey on Instagram just this past fall. And her account is just so positive and inspiring. Plus, she's super funny and just so real. I highly recommend following along with her. Today, in our conversation, Carlene shares how her family became minimalist. She shares her really simple systems for keeping the kids' toys and wardrobe minimal and decluttered. We also chat quite a bit about finding balance as a stay-at-home mom. So if you happen to stay at home with littles, or you plan to in the future, this conversation is really going to inspire you. I just love Carlene's perspective as a minimalist, a mom, and a wife, and I know you will too. I do also want to give you a little disclaimer that while Carlene and I both really love our rules as stay-at-home moms, and we talk about that in this episode, it does not mean if you're a working mom, your role is any less. I fully 100% believe that every mom that is doing what is best for her family, whether that's staying home or working outside of the home or working from home, is doing exactly what she's supposed to be doing. Not one is better than the other. And reminder that I do work from home as well. So I'm kind of, you know, in both worlds. I'm a working mom, but I also stay at home. So I just want you to be encouraged today through this episode, whether you do work outside of the home, whether you work from home, or whether you stay at home with your kids. Finding balance is hard either way. And I think Carlene has a lot of wisdom and grace to offer in that area of just finding balance as a mom. All right, enough previews and disclaimers about the episode. Here's my conversation with Carlene. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on the podcast, Carlene. Um, Before we get started talking all about minimalism and your story, can you just tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do? Of course. So, hi, my name is Carlene. I am here in West Palm Beach, Florida. I'm on Instagram as The Minimal Mom. I am the wife to C. John, and I have two tiny humans named Mila and Zion. Uh, Mila is two years old, and Zion is eight months old today, so they're about 18 months apart. Um, Previously, I was the general manager of a gym, but I left that all behind to be a stay-at-home mom, which has always been my dream, so that's what I do now. That's awesome. And whenever you started kind of your Instagram account, The Minimal Mom, what was your, did you kind of want to share minimalist inspiration or why did you end up starting that? Oh, so I was sharing my journey already under just my regular name, but it's kind of hard to connect with other people when you just have your name because they don't really know what your account is about. So I wanted to reach the minimal community, minimalism community, and wanted people to be able to find me as well as be able to find them. So that's why I changed that name. 
So that's kind of what I did too. I love what you share. So it's definitely, I feel like inspiring a lot of people. So talk a little bit about like when you started adopting a more minimalist lifestyle um, in your home and your life, were you and your husband on the same page? You can talk about that a little bit too. Yeah, sure. So I like this question. I get it a lot, actually. Like people want a specific date and I don't have one. But what I can tell you is that it's really been a series of events that led us to this point in our lives right now. So going back to 2015, we started our debt-free journey. Uh, We took the Financial Peace University course by Dave Ramsey. So on that journey, we just naturally became frugal. So although we weren't like getting rid of a bunch of stuff at that time, we weren't really bringing stuff in, if that makes any sense. So we weren't accumulating a lot more. Um, And then in 2017, we had our first child and all of that went out the window because your first child, you need every single thing on the market. So we had all the stuff and I ended up just being so happy thinking I was like overly prepared, not realizing like it was just way too much. And I quit my job around the time my daughter was nine months old. And that was the first time that I was like around everything. And when I say like everything, we had so much stuff and I just started to get overwhelmed. I'm like, I don't want to be home all day surrounded by all of these things. So instead of getting rid of it, I started to organize and, um, I was waiting because I knew I was going to have another child soon. I wasn't even pregnant yet. Did all of that, organized everything into perfect bins. And then I found out I was pregnant a month later. And then shortly after I found out it was a boy. So that was kind of like my permission to myself to like get rid of all these things that I thought were sentimental because it was a boy and all those things were for girls. So I started getting rid of those things. It felt good. It was nothing that I was putting on Instagram. It was just like for myself, I was like getting rid of stuff. And then my daughter had uh, a speech delay and how this like all works with minimalism. Like I'll get to that, but her speech delay was getting pretty bad. And her speech therapist and the doctor were saying, you know, when kids have speech delay, sometimes they're just so consumed with technology. Maybe it's even cartoons to the point where they don't really want to communicate with people because they don't have to. So they were telling me, oh, you should really limit her screen time because she doesn't really need it. So then I had this crazy idea, like, let's just get rid of our TVs. Like we don't need it at all. So my husband came home and I'm like, we're going to get rid of our TV. And he was like, all right, let's do it. So it's funny you ask if he's on board. He's always been on board with everything. But then I had like all this time and I was also pregnant. And so anyways, I remember Googling like, what do families without TVs do? Which then led me to this whole like minimalism community. And I didn't even really know the word had like this whole, you know, (laughs) everybody is like so into the minimalist right now. But yeah, the minimalist documentary came up. And I watched it and I loved it, which led me to like Project 333, which then led me to Marie Kondo. I mean, before the whole Netflix craze, I actually read the books. (laughs) (laughs) So at that point, I just started to really identify what I was doing and how I was living my life with the minimalist people and this movement. And so at that point, I would say around like August 2018 is when I actually like started sharing more of this journey and changed my name to the minimal mom. Yeah. That's so cool that it kind of like was a gradual thing and just, I guess, spurred on by, by circumstances in your life. Um, it's so hard to like want to keep all of that sentimental baby stuff. And it's amazing like how much of it you get, especially with that first child. I can totally relate. I feel like that was part of what made minimalism so appealing to us um, as well, because we had a baby in 2017 too. And then that documentary kind of popped up and we're like, okay, great. Like we, it's permission to let go of some things. Um, Okay. So, so when you kind of really started to dive into minimalism and I guess like actually put a name to the movement or even before that, what were some of the biggest changes that you saw in your life? What have you seen like is different from now to maybe when you had, a lot of stuff like back in 2017 when you had your first baby um what do you see as the biggest changes all right i'm gonna go kind of deep with this response all right so that's good i like that honestly minimalism has changed pretty much everything but like i say this to my husband all the time my quality of life is different um so for the past 10 years i have struggled with like pretty hardcore anxiety And I know that word gets tossed around like so loosely these days, like everyone has anxiety, but some people actually really do struggle with it. And it's something that like, I don't really talk about that much, but it's there. 
And um, not that my anxiety is related to the condition of my house, but I do feel like the condition of your house can affect your mood and your just day-to-day life. So I started to realize that my triggers were related to things around the house. So it would be, you know, clothes everywhere or not being able to find something to wear with the closet filled with clothes. Or maybe I just had stuff everywhere. It just felt like everything was closing in on me. So you know, getting rid of stuff, I started to feel like, you know, those triggers were not around me all the time because all those little things would add up. So like at the end of the day, I would sometimes just sit there and just have these panic attacks or, um, my anxiety looks like not being able to sleep, not being able to leave the house. I mean, sometimes they're just pretty painful. And, um, yeah, so I just started eliminating triggers and, and just realizing that my house really affected my mood. And now that all that stuff is gone and now that I'm happy and I created a peaceful place to just be in every day, especially as a stay at home mom, you're looking at your house every day. So you got to like what's in it. (laughs) So those triggers are gone and I'm happier. And in, in a whole, like my husband's always thanking me because he feels the peace too. When he comes home, I'm happy. When he comes home, the kids are happy. He's happy. So just the whole mood and like the vibe of the house has become just very peaceful. So, and I I really do think that to minimalism. Yeah, that's, I love that because I think that we can like look at, you know, beautiful pictures of houses on Instagram or Pinterest or whatever. And, you know, that's, that's a lot of what sometimes we can see when we look up minimalism on Instagram and it's super inspirational, but like there's there is a reason for it. It's not just like a clean room. It's not just like a beautiful house or like, you know, clear countertops or whatever. It's not just about that. It's, it can affect your mood. And and I love the deeper part of minimalism. I think not that like, I think, you know, everyone has to be a minimalist, but I do think there are parts of this movement that can be for everyone. And what you just said is, is a huge reason why. Like, I didn't think that my, the state of my house was affecting my anxiety, but it totally does. I didn't notice that that was the reason for my anxiety. Now now I notice it. Yeah. It's like those little things, like you don't realize like having so much stuff or just being burdened with like a thousand things to do. And those can be little triggers. And before you know it, all of those little tiny things at the end of the day, just add up and then also throw on like a crying baby in the mix. And then that's like the perfect storm to, you know, have that panic attack or anxiety. And for someone who doesn't struggle with that, who wouldn't understand this, I mean, it went from before minimalism, maybe one to two times a week having one of those episodes to now, maybe once a month or maybe once every other month. So it's really, really helped everything in my life. Yeah. Well, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. It's important because a lot of people struggle with it. So in your home, like tangibly, what does minimalism look like for your family now? Like give us a picture of maybe, maybe your schedule or your home, something someone could look at your life and see like a tangible difference. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, well, we obviously have a lot less stuff. (laughs) I mean, I've gotten the comments where it's like, what do you do all day? Or you look like you just moved in. But other than that, (laughs) Um, our lifestyle has taught us to really slow down. So our schedules have changed a lot. As far as like my daily stay at home mom schedule, I have a few non-negotiable things that I do every single day. As a stay at home mom, you don't have to get it all done (laughs) all day, every day. So those things look like, you know, my kids need to be fed multiple times a day. (laughs) Um, They have a nap time and I have to take care of myself. Those are like three non-negotiable things. And then if I do everything else, fine. And then at night I do a nightly tidy, but it doesn't take so long because my schedule is kind of like clean as you go. So, you know, if you use a plate, rinse it, put it in the dishwasher. So I don't feel so overwhelmed at the end of the day. Um, But we really do use our time wisely now. Like my husband and I are really practicing in our home, the art of saying no so that we can have free time to just be a family. So of course our marriage comes first. So like Fridays, we freed up everything to just have a date night on Saturdays. It's family day. So if you invite us, it's all four of us or none. And so I know like we're just living this simple life and it's just gotten to be like so peaceful. And when we're home because of having less and because I can manage everything that we have right now, when my husband gets home from work, we're able to be a family. So all around, it's just this household has slowed down so much. 
Yeah, that's so good. And I mean, with two little kids, like if you try to keep a fast pace and be busy all the time, like at some point, (laughs) something's going to give. So that's awesome that you guys do that. And you like really have it kind of built into your schedule to seriously slow down. Yeah, kids can sense when you're overwhelmed or you just have too much going on. When we have too much on our plate, or we do too much in one day. My daughter, she just, she'll throw like a tantrum. Like she, it's too much for her little self. Yeah. So when we slow down, she has a better day. Yeah. It's almost nice that like, obviously, you know, we have to deal with tantrums from time to time anyways, but it's kind of nice that like when we tap into our toddler's needs, they kind of slow us down. I, I've been appreciating that about toddlerhood right now. Oh yeah. Um, so kind of talking about kids, let's talk about toys because that's one of the biggest questions that I get and we still have more toys than I'd like to have for one child. Um, but it's, it's manageable and that's, that's kind of where I fall on it. I would love to hear kind of what you guys do with toys. You have two kids now and I know one's still like in that baby phase, but babies baby toys can take up a ton of space. So how do you decide like how many toys to keep or what to get rid of, and what does that process look like for you? Okay, so this one is really easy for me because like you said, my kids are so young, so they don't really have that many opinions on stuff. Sure, they have their one or two toys that like I will not get rid of because I know that they love them, Um, but I keep it at a comfortable amount. So I have toys in two places, and that's a basket downstairs and a really small like toy chest upstairs. When that starts to look a little too full, I'll go through it because sometimes it's not that I brought more in. It's like my daughter came home with something that doesn't even belong to her and I need to give it back. Um, And then another thing I actually did today is every month I get a diaper subscription, which comes in a box. And I try to fill that with anything from the nursery that I can, whether that's toys or clothes from the kids, but I typically send toys out that way. So I never have like an overwhelming amount. Yeah, that's really cool. I love that that's like just part of your routine. Diaper box comes in, it gets filled up. and um. Yeah, it's like a once a month thing. And then I also do this. If my daughter doesn't play with something for two weeks, I get rid of it. As long as it's not something that my son can use, I will just send it all away. <laughs> because yeah. they really don't play with all of the toys. Like I've gone to people's houses and sure, kids love having toys, but they like their few toys. Mm-hmm. So lay them out. They're probably going to choose the same ones every day. Yeah, for sure. And that's, I've like rotated Gemma's toys and I found that she just seems like to play more when there's less in front of her instead of kind of having, you know, different options everywhere. So I love that kind of mindset of like, okay, she's not playing with it just get rid of yeah. it. Yeah. And if you are worried that they're going to cry or whatever, get rid of it at night. They'll be sleeping. <laughs> They'll never know. They'll wake up and chances are they won't even notice that it's gone. Hi, friend. Real quick. So I know you're enjoying today's episode, but I'm interrupting because I have a free resource for you. So last fall, I created a little ebook slash guide that goes into the importance of rhythms and routines in everyday life. It's called Simple and Purposeful Days, and I recently updated it and decided to offer it to you all for free. When I discovered how much creating rhythms and routines for my everyday life helped lighten my load as a mom who works from home, I just fell in love with this concept. The ebook is short and simple. It's only 20 pages, so you could probably tackle it in an hour or less. And it will help you create purpose statements for your days, as well as create rhythms and routines that make sense for your specific life. I also talk a little bit about follow through and help you create your why behind this, because we all know that that's the hardest but most important part of pretty much anything. I really hope you grab this free resource if you're feeling overwhelmed in any way, or if you feel like your days are getting away from you, because rhythms and routines have personally made my days so much more purposeful, manageable, and simple. Head to DesireAndries.com to grab it, or you can click the link for Simple and Purposeful Days in the show notes. All right, let's get back to the show. Um, Okay, so along the same lines, and this is where I struggle the most, and I saw a post that you put, um, put out on Instagram of your kid's closet the other day. It was like my life goal. (laughs) (laughs) We get so many clothes from grandparents and they're super cute, you know, little girl clothes, but, but it's so hard when they're constantly growing out of them. So how, um, what about with your kids clothes? Like 
with constantly growing babies? Do you keep their closets under control? Um, I know you do, at least from what I've seen on Instagram. So how do you do that? Uh, so to the madness. <laughs> my kids don't even have clothes in the closet. That's the first thing. Yeah. Um, we have a big dresser and they each have three drawers. The first two drawers have their clothes in them. And then the third drawer on the bottom is clothes that they don't fit into yet. So I keep it super under control. They have super minimal clothing. So everything gets worn. Everything has to fit in those drawers, those first two drawers. That is everything that they own. And then we don't have seasons in Florida. We just have like hot and hotter. So I don't need winter clothes. So I know it's going to be different for people up north. Um, So I'm actually also fortunate enough to have a mom and a mother-in-law who are super generous, like you said, your grandparents. So they always want to buy my kids stuff and I'm not going to stop them. So here's my thing. If they want to get you gifts and they want to love on your kids in that way, let them, but tell them what you need. So whenever they ask me, I say, okay, um, they need clothes the next size up. Even if they don't like need the clothes the next size up, I will store them in that third drawer and they're just ready right there. And then once they start fitting into the clothes in that third drawer, everything in the first two drawers gets donated. So I have two friends who have kids that are younger than my kids. So as soon as they stop fitting in those clothes, they go to those people. So I, always, I just have it down to such a system where I know it sounds like a lot of work for someone who just like, but once you get it down, it feels so much better. I was doing so much baby laundry and just, it was overwhelming. I mean, I had enough clothes to like clothes all the kids in the neighborhood probably. <laughs> yeah. So I got it down to that. And I don't get upset when people buy my kids things. I'm like, that's a blessing. I don't have to buy it. Right. And I always ask for a size up, store it for later and you can't go wrong. And then when it comes to like gifts and toys, going back to that, if someone wants to get your kid something, then like what I do with my daughter is I say, can you get her some like educational toys are a little bit more advanced than what she has now, because I'm going to need to get those anyways. And then when I get those, I'll just replace the older toys. That makes sense. Yeah, that's such a good idea. I'm the same way. Like, I just, I don't want to rob people's joy of giving my child stuff. And yeah, it's such a blessing. I can like count on my one hand how much I've bought my daughter clothes. Same. <laughs> but for sure, it's, it gets overwhelming. But I kind of love your mindset of just like, okay, as soon as they grow out, it's out of here. And I think that that's where I kind of, not that I keep it around if, the, if she grows out of it, but I'm kind of maybe where you were at with your, um, with your daughter, like, oh, should I keep it? Like, I don't know if I'm going to have, like, or when I'm going to have another kid or like, you know, if it's going to be a boy or a girl, but I kind of got myself to I'm like, just keep gender neutral. Just <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And then just remember that those gift giving grandparents are probably going <laughs> to load you up next child. Too, yeah. so you don't have to save everything. But yeah, it it is hard sometimes. I did choose a few pieces for my children that I just loved. And I actually made a shadow box for my daughter. And I'm going to make one for my son soon. But that's a good way to like keep it organized and like minimal, but still keep what you really love. Yeah, I like that too. It's hard when like the baby stuff, it, it, it can be so sentimental. Um, and I think that's like a lot of, and you probably get the same questions. That's what a lot of people ask me too, like about, you know, how do you let go of that stuff? I have bins and bins and bins and just like, you just have to, <laughs> like you have to, you can't keep it all. Um, and when, like, what's, what good is it going to do? <laughs> yeah. I had enough bins of my daughter's clothes to fill the bottom storage under my stairs. Yeah. So I get it. It's, it's hard but you'll feel so much better when it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So kind of you touched on this a little bit earlier, um, but I do want to talk about finding balance as a stay at home mom. And I didn't realize like how, how much this question may be something that you have a lot to speak to, not just because you're a stay at home mom, but like you said earlier, like with your struggles with anxiety. Um, but recently I had a question from a mom who was just feeling really overwhelmed by motherhood. This like inability to keep the house together and just keep your life together basically when being a stay at home mom. And, and there is just so much out there of, I don't know. I was almost, I wanted to be a stay at home mom. I knew I did, but I was almost like, okay, like the image of the crazy hot mess mom, like, you know, that's, that's what you see when you, 
when you think about staying at home, I think that's like the most prevalent image. Um, so she even mentioned like, uh, being resentful towards her husband because of it, because of like doing all the house chores and not being able to keep up. And so I kind of wanted to like pose this question to you because I know that like, I find a lot of joy in staying at home, but, but it can be hard to find balance. So, um, I know it's a long winded question, but I just wanted to hear how, how you have found like a rhythm that works for you or, or maybe what like tips you can give to a mom who might be feeling that way. Because I do think that, that minimalism has a lot to offer, but also like, it's not just minimalism. It's like the actual people who are doing this, um, the actual moms who are doing this that can offer advice. So, so how do you keep balance, I guess, at home? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I know exactly how this woman who wrote that felt. Um, I mean, I was there and sometimes those days do come no matter how organized or minimal you are. Yeah. Um, but I would say first thing is take all of the expectations off of the table and you have to find what works for you and your family. Um, you need to slow down if you need to declutter if you haven't already, because less means less on mom, less to clean, less to pick up, which means less time spent worrying about those things. And what I did that was most important to me, and I'm really, really sticking to that lately, was identifying your non-negotiable things. And those are the things that need to get done. And the rest counted as a bonus. Because sometimes we're so busy that it can steal the joy of just being a stay-at-home mom. So we think since we stay at home, we have to do it all. And the goal isn't to get more done. The goal is to have less to do. So take everything off your plate. It doesn't matter if your mom and your grandma, they all did everything. Do what works for you. And as far as resenting your husband, that has, it's out of his control. So you just have to be the peace in your home. You're with the kids all day, you're home, and it is what you make it. I mean, you can't control what your kids do all the time, but if everything else isn't piling on top of you, you'll be better equipped to just deal with your kids and you'll probably handle it in a better way too. So I learned that hard lesson along the way because being a stay-at-home mom is hard work but it's, it's hard being a working parent too. So I would say just find the flow that works for you and do less. Less is more (laughs) all around, less stuff, less to do. Don't make yourself so busy and don't compare yourself to the Instagram mom who is doing everything because in reality, she's, she's trying to figure out how she can do less. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so good. And I think like one of the reasons I thought of you when I saw that um, post is because, well, one, I knew I was interviewing you coming up soon, but two, I, it seems, you know, we only know each other like through our conversations on Instagram, but it just seems that you like really prioritize your marriage. So I really, I, I love that you said like, you know, just, you can't resent your husband for that. It's not his, mm-hmm. his fault. And it's, yeah. you know, if, they, if your husband works outside of the home, then you know, that's, it's just like a whole different dynamic. It was a really hard lesson to learn mm-hmm. that my husband is working so hard. And I used to think, yeah, but you had a break. No, he was working. He was because I used to work and I still came home to like try to clean and still try to be a mom. And it was so hard. So now that the tables are reversed, I guess at one point I forgot how hard it is to be a working parent. So, you know, I had to learn that I am basically running the home. And that doesn't mean he doesn't ever do anything, but I need to like take responsibility for it. And having less means that it's not like, it's not as hard as it used to be. So, I mean, and just your marriage comes first before everything. Yes. (laughs) Unpopular opinion, but it comes before your kids too. Mm -hmm. And it comes before your home. So I really feel like I have set up a place of peace where my husband can come home and he's happy and we can just, you know, just be. Yeah, I I love that. And I think that's like, I feel like all of that is unpopular opinions. And like, you know, if you're in the role of stay at home mom, then you might think you're doing it for just for your kids. But like, how can you, I don't know, how can you include your husband into that? And that's why I um, recently... I feel like I've been really inspired by a lot of homemakers on Instagram because the idea of the homemaker is, you know, we don't use that word anymore. Um, It's like outdated, but, but it's not just about like stay at home mom 
be there for your kids. It's like, okay, now like I have this time and space, even though it doesn't feel like it sometimes because kids can be overwhelming, but like the time and space to, to provide a peaceful place um, for, you know, your whole family to come home to. So not just about Yeah. Your you know, something I always tell my husband is on my worst days where I feel like I couldn't get anything done and the kids were like tag teaming me, mm -hmm. I would still choose to be a stay at home mom versus having to go back to my full-time job. Yeah. So I would, I would choose it over and over on, on the worst of the worst, because I don't know if a lot of stay at home moms had worked um, at any point before becoming a stay at home mom, but being away from your kids is really hard. <laughs> Yeah. So even, you know, take what you can and just enjoy it because it's going to go fast. Yeah, for sure. I, I was taught, um, for probably only a few months, um, with Gemma outside of the home, but it was, it was really hard. And, you know, there, there are moms who like, that's what works for them. And that's great too. You know, one is not better or superior than the other, but like, you know, if we have this, this blessing and gift to be able to stay home, I just love your perspective on that. Yeah. But like you said, like not downing moms who work because I was there and I have friends who just prefer to work mm -hmm. and that's awesome too. I mean, we all have to do what's, you know, just best for us. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So before we wrap this up, um, I have two questions that I like to ask guests. And the first one is, um, what is something that you're simplifying right now? Ooh, my schedule for sure. Just even being home with the kids, I would always try to take them to the next activity mm -hmm. and I stopped doing that. And just something that my husband and I talk about is like, well, this is my quote, but <laughs> my mental health is more important to me than my social life. And I just truly believe that although I love the people that I love, I can't do it all. So I'm the type of person who doesn't need to talk to or be around people all the time. But when I see you, we'll pick up where we left off. So I've just been really simplifying that. Um, kids don't need to go to something every single day. Yeah. So I had to learn that because I was like, I got to take my daughter here. And then she had swimming lessons and then she had book time at the library. And I'm like, that's too much. Mm -hmm. So just simplifying my schedule and just kind of going with the flow of the day. Yeah. I, I can relate to that for sure. I love being home and I feel like it's, like some days, some days it's just easier on, you know, everyone <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if we just stay home. <laughs> and last question I have is what's something you're loving right now or just something you can't stop talking about? Oh my goodness. My minivan. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's beautiful. <laughs> if you That's haven't seen it, go look at it. I have been wanting a minivan since like before I even had kids. So dorky, but growing up, we always had minivans and it was like the coolest thing. So we finally were able to buy our minivan and it's just, I can't stop talking about it. And <laughs> like vans are just like, okay, we get it. It's a van. But I'm like, no, but did you see it? <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> That's awesome. And you guys, you guys uh, were able to like actually full, pay in full for that, right? Yeah. We, um, we saved for a long time. I want to say it was like a little less than a year probably that we saved. Um, after doing, you know, the financial peace course yeah, and we were able to just go in there and pay cash. Yeah. That's it awesome. Was, it was scary and it was <laughs> exciting because it was the biggest purchase we've ever made cash. And, um, it was, it was great. I'll yeah. never forget it. That has to make it like that much more exciting because you're like, this is mine and, yeah. and I love it. <laughs> My first time ever buying a car and you know, I've never had a car payment. So it was, it was great. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much for being on the show and just for all of your insight into minimalism and stay-at-home mom life. Um, and before we go, just one more time, where can listeners find you so they can follow along? I am on Instagram at The Minimal Mom. Okay, awesome. Or you can just look up Carlene Armstead. Okay, isn't Carlene great? I just love her honesty and her dedication to the things that she values. And I know that you are leaving this episode inspired in some way today, whether it be to declutter your kids' toys and closet, um, or, you know, at least to find systems around how to make those things less overwhelming. Or maybe it's just, you know, in your mindset as a mom, because I feel like 
following Carlene on Instagram. That's a lot of what I get from her. She is just such a positive person. I feel like she's filled with gratitude about her life and just her role as a mom. So I just really hope that um, that you could feel that through this conversation as well and that that, that inspires you. Because more than anything, I think the best part about minimalism is the space it gives us to change our lives and the space it gives us to change our mindset, to change our hearts, because our minds aren't cluttered by our environment. So now, once you've gotten rid of the stuff, gotten rid of the clutter, you can get deeper and you can start really decluttering your life, your schedule, and create a life that fits you, create a life that matters to you, and, you know, a life that's focused on the things that matter to you. That's what I love the most about this conversation, is that when Carlene talks about how minimalism changed her life, she gets deep with it. She talks about, you know, her struggles with anxiety. She talks about how she's decluttering her schedule now. It's so much deeper than just getting rid of the stuff. But that step has to happen first. You get rid of all the stuff that's taking up unnecessary space and time. And then there's more space for what truly matters. And that's what this podcast is all about. I'm really thankful that you spent the time to listen in today. And I really do hope that it has added value to your life in some way to listen to this episode. If it has, and if you're loving the podcast, then go ahead and scroll down, hit those five stars, give this podcast a rating. And if this podcast has really inspired you, I would love a review from you. I would love to see just how you've loved it, um, what you're loving about it, and when you do give the podcast a rating or review, it helps more eyes get on the podcast. And I'm just forever grateful about that. So if you happen to take the time to give it a review, then go ahead and message me on Instagram at minimalish underscore motherhood or email me hi at desireeendries.com and let me know that you did because I have some little free hand lettered art that I made um, that I want to send over to you. It's just a printable PDF but um, I think it will inspire you on your minimalist journey. And I just want to say thank you for, you know, giving that couple of extra minutes to help the podcast by giving it a positive review. All right. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you next week, friends, when I'm actually going to be talking about this cleaning routine that I finally adopted into my life. And if you know me, you know, I do not like cleaning. So this is an episode for all of you who just don't love cleaning talking about the simple cleaning routine that I've adapted through the month of March that's really worked for me. Um, I'm going to talk about that and I'm also going to talk a little bit about mindset around cleaning because you know I'm not going to have just an episode about cleaning because I do not believe that's what minimalism is about. Um, I believe it goes deeper than that. So tune in next week to see what I've been doing for my cleaning routine and why I think it's important and kind of the mindset change that I've had this past month as I've focused on that and made it my goal to just keep a cleaner house. So check that out next week, friends, and I will talk to you then.